There were many major players throughout history that contributed to the workers' rights movement. Since the 1800s, many people have tried to earn rights from their employers. For example, Samuel Gompers led a cigarette markers international union. Uh, he negotiated between representatives of labor and management to reach written agreements on wages, hours, and working conditions. These strikes were very successful and this sparked unions all over the country. Eugene V. Debs attempted a, an industrial union. He worked for an American railroad company. Even though he failed, he sparked a lot of momentum of union organizing. Another major player was Robert M. La Follette. He ran for a governor and got rid of all the corruption like railroad companies giving uh, politicians free passes. He also decided to fight for protecting working children. Other major players that influenced workers' rights were Louis D. Brandeis, um, Florence Kelly, Kelly and uh, Josephine Goldmark. They fought to limit working hours. Many states decided to change the amount of hours women had to work. There are many historical events that have influenced the workers' rights movement. One in particular is the Great Depression. The Great Depression of the 1930s changed Americans' view of the unions. Congress passed one of the first pro-labor laws, the Norris LaGuardia Act, which made yellow dog contracts unenforceable. The law also limited the power of federal courts to stop strikes and other job actions. Most companies started to not negotiate with the unions and started to slash their paychecks. This caused many hunger riots and lots of violence on the streets of America, which had the public's attention. This forced President Roosevelt to have to do something about it. One writer that Roosevelt actually called into his office was A. Philip Randolph. He created the first black union and demanded rights. He was going to plan one of the biggest riots in American history, so Roosevelt had to do what he asked or there could have been lots of consequences. Another major event was World War II. It was a large war, so the military needed men. Blacks were willing to join, but they wanted the same rights that whites had along with the people at home in America. This was an issue for the government to handle because there were many uprisings. Adding on to this, the civil rights movement had a great effect on history. Blacks not only wanted equal social rights, but working rights as well. This movement took place over a long period of time, one title that had a huge effect was Title VII of 1964. This covered employers on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. An employer also cannot discriminate against a person because of his interracial association with another, such as by an interracial marriage. This was a huge step up, especially for blacks and women, because they couldn't get fired for silly reasons. One important event was the formation of the National Labor Union in 1866. This union of skilled craft workers wanted to increase worker pay and to limit working hours per day without lowering pay. It also advocated for equal treatment of women and minorities. Soon this union switched direction and the Knights of Labor was created in 1869, which included all types of workers. This too ultimately failed and was replaced by the Federation of Organized Trade and Labor Unions in 1881, which itself created the American Federation of Labor in 1886. The Committee for Industrial Organization was also formed in 1935. The AFL and CIO together advocate for workers and have for years strived to provide support and opportunity to laborers. Also, special unions were formed for different types of workers. For example, the International Association of Firefighters helped to protect firemen, while the American Federation of Teachers worked to help teachers. In addition to the formation of unions, proposing and eventually passing legislation was one of the main ways that workers slowly began to gain their rights. One such law was the Railway Labor Act, which was passed in 1926 and mandated that employers listen to and compromise with union workers. The National Industry Recovery Act was passed in 1933, which encouraged workers to form or join unions so they would be able to use collective bargaining, which is a group of workers bargaining with their employer to improve working conditions to protect themselves. 
Strikes have also helped workers to gain access to the wealth and living conditions that the wealthy enjoyed. One famous and successful strike was the Postal Workers' Strike in 1970, after which the postal workers received most of what they asked for, including the right to collective bargaining. Some other strikes include the Homestead Strike in 1892, the Pullman Strike from 1893 to 1894, and the Air Traffic Controllers Strike in 1981. Though none of these strikes were successful, they still contributed to the general effort to improve working conditions, pay, and hours for laborers. They also gave a voice to the oppressed workers and publicized their struggles. Uh, so when did you start working on the farm? Workers during the summer when the pineapples were ripening. And uh, there was no tourist trade in those days. Uh-huh. A long time ago. <laughs> 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 so, uh, that was, everybody went there. It was kind of fun because all the kids were there. Okay. Um, so how many years did you work there? Uh, just two years until I finished high school and then I left for college in Wisconsin. Right. Um... How many hours, like a day, did you work? Uh, at the beginning of the summer, it was just a regular eight-hour day. But when the pineapples really came in, we went to 12 hours a day. Oh, geez, that's a lot. That is a lot. I mean, <laughs> hot. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, so, you know, they had to be penned and, and prepared right. and shipped out. So, And they were ripening. At, you know how things ripen all at once. Yeah, right. <laughs> care that that's what happened. So we went into 12-hour shifts then. Okay. Um, what was your hourly wage? Oh, I can't. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Actually, it was pretty good in those days. It was a dollar fifteen <laughs> okay. an hour. So, and if we made $40 a week, that was great. <laughs> um, so then the working conditions were like fairly relatively... Um, it Good. Was relatively controlled. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I didn't work in the fields, and I don't know anything about how it, it must have been horrible out in the hot right, sun, yeah. the pineapples getting poked with those sharp, you know, pricker-like tops. Yeah, definitely. Pineapples. I worked in the cannery, and it was in a way just as hot because they were cooking all the pineapples, and it was steaming and hot and canning things, and yeah. noisy, lots of cans rattling around. Right. Uh, and so. It, the state controlled it pretty well, but it was still, it was still not, I wouldn't want to do it for a living, yeah. <laughs> for a career. Yeah. Um, so what did, exactly did you do again in the job? Oh, uh, I was too young. At, at 16, they put all the young kids in the peckers because it was less, less hard. Because if you were trimming, you picked up a whole pineapple. Right. Middle finger through the cord area. Yeah. And held it up with one hand, and then with the other hand, you're trimming with a knife. And sometimes... Yeah, it's kind of dangerous. Yeah, you, you, you cut your glove. You had to wear gloves because it's very acidic. Right, yeah, the pH is pretty... And over over eight hours, 12 hours, your hands would be... You didn't wear gloves. So you wore gloves, but sometimes it would drip down beyond the glove, and then you had what they, we call pine burns. It would be oh, that sounds in terrible. Pineapple, and it would be up on your elbows and and your upper arms because that's where when you're holding up the pineapple, that's where right. it would drip down. So yeah. it it was it was hard, and you stood up for eight hours. So right, yeah, that's that sounds pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one last question: Was there? Do you remember if there was like a minimum wage in place at the time? Yeah, it was a dollar fifty. That was the minimum wage. Okay. And that's what we were paid. Right. Okay. Okay. In 1976, the Supreme Court case, General Electric Company v. Gilbert, ruled that it was legal to fire or penalize workers due to pregnancy. This was because it was not considered sex discrimination under Title VII of 1964 Civil Rights Act. This sparked a lot of controversy amongst women because they believed that they should not be punished by their employers for the sole reason of being pregnant. 
Women were greatly affected by the unfairness of this court case and were able to get the Pregnancy Discrimination Act, which protects the rights of pregnant women in the workforce, passed in 1978. Another su Supreme Court case that affected workers' rights is Hazen Paper Company v. Biggins in 1993. This case resulted in the protection of workers over the age of 40 from discrimination. Throughout history, farmers have been mistreated and their voices haven't been noticed. A group named Oxfam has been trying to help them. For years, Oxfam has worked with organizations that promote the rights and welfare of farm workers in the U.S. They also support efforts to improve working and living conditions, raise wages, obtain rights to organize, and raise voices of the men and women who work in the fields. Farm workers are excluded from the protections of the National Labor Labor Relations Act and most protections under the Fair Labor Standards Act. This means that unlike other workers, farm workers have no right to overtime, no right to organize, and no sick leave under federal law. Uh, they get low wages as well, and this hasn't changed since 1978. A major issue that is being addressed today is retaliations against workers based on their choice of health care. Many employers are cutting employee hours based on the health care plan that people possess. This has especially affected those that are under Obamacare. Currently, the law does not protect people from these kinds of unfair acts, but it will starting January 1, 2014. Starting on the state, employers are not allowed to fire, threaten, or discipline their employees based solely on their health care selection. This means that workers will be gaining more rights because employers will have fewer opportunities and reasons for firing them. Another issue in the workplace is that employers are legally allowed to discriminate against their gay employees. In 29 states, there are not any laws that prevent harassing, firing, or denying a promotion to employees that are gay. Presently, the Employee Non-Discrimination Act has been proposed to Congress to end this unfair treatment towards those in the LGBT community. If this act is passed, this will prevent unreasonances, which will make a huge difference in a gay worker's lives. Th they will be able to work without fear of being fired for their identity, which will liberate the gay community as a whole. Another major issue today in today's workers' rights is the Chicago teacher strike. The teachers asked for better pay, better benefits, and protection for teachers who's lost, who lost their jobs due to school closures. The teachers also wanted to bring up the topic of educational issues. They demanded a decrease in high-stakes testing for students and an increase in music, art, and gym programs available at public schools. They also called for smaller class sizes and paid preparation time. These movements had caught the eye of the media and the most Americans. These workers are demanding justice and they are hoping the government will give it to them. They were successful in many ways, but many of their demands were not met. Rather than raising their pay by 20% as requested, the union settled for a 3% raise this year and an additional 3% raise the following two years. The teachers succeeded in ending plans to pay teachers based on the performance of their students. The strike ended in a compromise, which is a common uh, way to resolve strikes somewhat fairly. Another more universal modern-day workers' rights issue is minimum wage. Currently, the federal minimum wage is $7.25 hourly, which most people do not consider a living wage, especially for families. Minnesota, which has a state minimum wage of $6.15, propo proposed a bill that will increase it to in 950 by 2015. The highest state minimum wage thus far is 919 in Washington. So this bill would be a huge step for workers everywhere because it would raise the standards of the na nation as a whole.